Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Pastor Kristen. I'm so grateful that you are here with us today to celebrate and remember uh, Brian's life. So we're grateful you're here. A few announcements just so you are uh, get familiar with the building. If you are in need of restrooms, if you go out this door and down through our lounge, to the left is a little kitchenette, and on either side are bathrooms, so you can feel free to use those as needed. Um, also, after the service, there will be a um, lunch, well, kind of luncheon, afternoon food uh, down reception <laughs> downstairs in uh, Fellowship Hall. So you can either go down these stairs through that door and down the stairs right there, or there's another staircase if you go out through the lounge, past that kitchenette, and down the stairs. Either one will get you um, we'll get you where you need to go. So, um, again, we're grateful you're here to celebrate Brian's life. And as you are able, if you will please stand, we'll begin our service. Can I help you? Um, Is it slide down there? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And let us pray. O oh God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our brother Brian. We thank you for giving him to us to know and to love, and as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see that death has been swallowed up in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ, so that we may live in confidence and hope, until by your call we are gathered into our heavenly home in the company of all your saints. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And I know Brian requested this hymn, uh, hymn number 632, O God, Our Help in Ages Past. To thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies trample. 
Yet let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed with transgress without cause. Shew me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth and, lead, and teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation, on thee I do wait all day. Thank you for being here and for watching. Uh, my name is Iris Diaz, and I am Beth's wife. And I try to do this. Brian Ken left this world way too soon. 61 years old, too soon to be precise. He was born here in Erie on December 26, 1961. His mom, Marilyn, swore that he was born a full month past his due date and that he was a big, big kid. He died on Friday, December 8th, 2023, in a house, exactly three years after his pancreatic diagnosis, with our daughter, his sisters, his nephew Spencer, our matron of honor, and me all around him. Brian was a tall guy, 6'4", that he speak, two inches taller than Dick, his dad, and always on the slender side. He was clumsy as a kid. So he never learned to hunt like all his cousins did, do sports, or anything which required too much outdoor sea coordination skills. But he did, he did like to walk very fast, and he liked to hike. He hated water on his face. So swimming and water sports were not his thing. But walking in the rain was always fine and okay. Brian did excel, though, at anything book related. He loved to read and he loved to learn. He was an introvert, which was great at times and not so great at others. Since very young, he had greatest ambitions in life. But his greatest ambition was to become a dad. I wish he fulfilled at age 43. Oh my, the joy to see him with Socorro. The many hours he spent flying her around in laundry baskets, going up and down the steps in her house, dancing with her to calm her at night, telling her stories, and reciting very old sayings from his own dad to help her sleep, probably sayings from radios in the 1940s. Very old. Oh, he will flush her to the shower in his very hot steaming water in the bathroom so she could breathe fine again. Brian always smiled when seeing her concentrating on something or doing something new and really loved that she picked for college, Miami University in Ohio, a school he recommended. What a fine, kind young lady she has become. We have nothing but pride and love for this kid. Brian had two baby sisters, Betsy Kay and Susan Lewis, but you know, well, they're not so baby anymore, if you know what we mean. <laughs> Betsy was the first one with a kid, Molly, who was married to Fred, and now a grandkid, Addie. Sue has two kids, Will and Spencer. So Gogro, our daughter, was born between Will and Spencer. Brian had one brother-in-law, my brother was the one, with his own adult kids, Yesenia and Gabriel. And guess what, when we got married, the older kids, Molly, Yesenia, Gabriel, with Monica and Viviana, rest in peace, were in our wedding 23 years ago. We never celebrated our anniversary on the day we got married, which was November 26th, but we always observed our anniversary the Sunday after Thanksgiving, which is the day when we actually got married. Brian attended Jefferson Elementary School, Memorial Junior Middle School, Academy High School, and Michigan State University. Brian spent way too much time in grad school, and finished with an all but dissertation PhD. He was never happy about this, but he learned to live with that. He learned a lot in grad school, which led to his obsession of how things rot. Now, if you want to be a little bit fancy, Brian was a productivity research economist who concentrated, concentrated in capital measurement. He worked for Uncle Sam for 30 years. First, 
in the Bureau of Labor Statistics, where he met me, and then in the Bureau of Economic Analysis, where he escaped to avoid us spending all hours of the day together, except, of course, until the pandemic, when that hit, and that was 24 hours together. And yes, he was a bureaucrat. As a researcher, Brian spent his days working with obscure formulas and created economic models that at times were very practical within the government machinery to implement, but that always, or almost always, produced better results. It always amazed Brian that he got paid to do something he actually enjoyed. Brian's expertise on how things rot, becoming a dad in 2005, helping to clean my mom's house after she passed away in 2008, and the movie Interstellar in 2014 led to a new day of reckoning. Brian so proudly declared that he didn't want people to give him stuff anymore that would outlive him unless strictly necessary, but things that could be consumed and used without much carbon footprint during production or in transit to get to him. Well, this made birthdays and Christmas presents a real challenge to all, but no more than to me, of course. So gone were the plans to travel to far and exotic places, no more plans to retire to the easy life, Brian developed an immense love for the desert and New Mexico, and a sense of responsibility for the earth and those who will come behind us. He traveled a few times to New Mexico, and his dream was to help restore the land. He learned how to build adobe houses, develop an interest in gardening, and started to use our backyard in Maryland as practice ground. This much he regretted with his passing to be unable to complete this heavenly call. Instead, so we are doing the best thing, but the best next thing we could do, which is to provide funding for people who are already living and working this spring. Permaculture, anyone? And if you haven't heard, Google it. Brian was a deeply, deeply religious man. He tried to be good to others and to the environment. And yes, we know that's a cliche word these days, what a bad word, depending where you sit on this issue of climate change. But he always claimed that his Methodist wife was way too happy with her sense of grace. While he was born and raised Lutheran, and he had a big, deeper sense of duty. Well, at the end, he reconciled a little bit of both, and we pray so go from that way. Brian was a self-taught expert in the historical issues. He loved all hymns and loved well-crafted prayers that could be read and re-read to bring comfort. Loud noises and flashing lights got to him. I guess he never revered in the age of the 70s, 80s, and 90s, although he really knew the terms. He loved jazz the most, <coughs> and Coltrane was a special favorite. The color red, carnations, Cornland apples, good food, but nothing bad in cream, mayo, or Kobe. I know. <laughs> when needed, just mustard. No salad were prettier than Brian's, and no apple pie crust tasted better than his. Always lamented that his mom joined the trend of topping pies with crumbs. What was that about, he would always say. He told himself to cook with the Boston Glove Cookbook, and the Better Homes new cookbook as a backup when he went to MIT. His favorite cooking book, though, was The Art of, the Art, I'm sorry, of South American Cooking, where he learned to cook Brazilian feijoada. Brian ate very well, and his late mother-in-law, my mom, was always impressed with Brian's ability to eat semillitas, or as Socorro calls it, squirrel food, you know, nuts and that. <laughs> In addition to his beautiful blue eyes and certainly good looks, Brian inherited a bracty gene from his mom that made him more susceptible to developing cancer. When pancreatic cancer knocked on his door, Brian was fortunate enough to finish under the care of Dr. Danielle Lahue and Amy Ryan, his nurse practitioner, practitioner at Johns Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore, Maryland. Amy is greatly admired within Hopkins, and everyone, everyone, everyone sorry, wishes to have an Amy on their side. 
and we felt very lucky to have Amy on ours. Dr. Lahiru is famous for advocating for his patients. He found ways to keep Brian above ground for exactly three years after diagnosis. We are deeply grateful for his care. Dr. Lahira was never too busy to discuss a new question or an idea from us. His humanity spoke volumes. Recently, a doctor, when Brian was in the hospital the last few weeks, a doctor told me, wow, your husband, colleagues, is a big shot. So there you have it. A doctor admired by many, an unbelievable well-oiled machine that is Hopkins, an amazing great Amy, and with God's grace, Brian finished living longer than expected. Brian was able to see Socorro complete high school and go off to college. What a blessing. We want more time together, but we are happy that he passed knowing that he is going to be okay. I, on the other hand, we have to figure out how to get insects that crawl into our house and get used to use a two-step ladder or a dining room chair to reach the higher places in our house. I will also have to buy our next home on my own, one that has a bathroom and a bedroom on the main floor, or oh more. How we wish we had had that now. And one last word for our kind friends, neighbors, and family from close and afar. It does take a village to raise a child, but it also takes a village to help a no longer child transition from this world. Thank you all for your prayers, your thoughts, the goodbyes, and the care for us and our family. A special thanks to that network of prayer warriors from Facebook, the Delmarva Peninsula, Pennsylvania, Puerto Rico, and for every friend and family member who added Brian's name to a prayer list in a church, a temple, a mosque, or simply in your hearts at home. You have sustained us. Honestly, at the end of the day, all Brian hoped was for you to say that he tried his best and that he was a good child, and for God to take him back. See you on the other side. Love you all. Love you, Brian. Sincerely, it is a Brian. from a letter to a friend. In late 2020, our friend Reverend Tony Paulson sent $25 to friends to celebrate our upcoming birthday. This is Brian talking. And, he, and she asked that all the recipients do something good with the money. Brian participated, multiplied for original gift, made some contributions to help ease the environment. This reading is an excerpt from a letter to Connie and an explanation of his love in New Mexico. Still when I pray, I try to remember St. Paul's advice. If we live, we live to the Lord. If we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether it is whether we live or whether we die, we're the Lord's. I try to be grateful for what life has already given to me, especially Edis and Sapporo. But it's the interpretation for the interruption of the longer term plans that rankles. I've decided in 2016 that the world really won't be able to steer clear of climate hell. The necessary changes have been postponed for so long that they're very large now. I've begun planning for an off-grid retirement, devoted to growing food in difficult conditions, full circle composting, reclaiming ruined soil. I thought it would take about 20 years or so to get it right. So then once the coral and her kids would need a lifeboat, one would be ready. And if not her, then someone. People will need to restore the environment, 
for a long, long time after we've got done showing through it. I'd like to help whoever washes across my doorsteps to keep doing so after I'm gone. So I began making plans, learning the garden, which I'd never cared about before. I would bury clay pots to eat out water. I would compost, build a composting toilet. I would investigate rainwater harvesting, adobe and straw bale home construction, greenhouses and cookstoves that would pr produce charcoal. You'd bury that with your compost permanently. Scouring ads for raw land, visiting sites in New Mexico, which is now bearing the front of the climate change. New Mexico is an excellent place to learn. Interviewing people there who are way ahead on this. And finally, with fits and starts, persuading Adias to come home. She agreed if we could live within two hours of an airport, not El Paso. <laughs> Those plans are way up in the air now. There are fallbacks. Rural Pennsylvania, Maryland, West Virginia. They're all closer to Hopkins. Although folks in these states are temperamentally unready for the wholesale changes that nature seems to impose on us. The Sunday through Saturday, repentance, really. It would really be nice to work with amiable neighbors and anything good come out of Nazareth, maybe. Jesus said the meek would inherit the earth. I always figured that didn't mean me. No one who mixes personal extinction with the fate of the planet can be considered me even if the timing is close. I want some way to help save, help the saving remnant. Yet some of the meek are already at work daily, bringing about a kingdom that can barely cover its financial expenses, even as it's redeeming the least bit of earth and the people who live nearby. In the Santa Clara Pueblo, 15 miles northeast of Los Alamos, New Mexico. That's where the atom bomb was built. The Flower and Tree Permaculture Institute, headed by Tua sculpture, Roxanne Swensel, has run a small off-grid solar power home, garden, school, community center for the past 30 years. She's been doing what I want to do. Roxanne began with an eighth of an acre of ruined dry land, working it well and humbly on a shoestring budget. The Institute's latest project is the Pre-Contact Pueblo Diet, in which Swensel and a couple dozen of friends, relatives, and neighbors, many of them overweight, pre-diabetic, and demoralized, agreed to quit their modern diet on heavy soda, fast foods, and fry breads in favor of the foods that were available to their ancestors. The, experience, the experiment markedly reduced participants' blood sugar, cholesterol, inflammation, pounds, improved their morale and energy. Furthermore, it strengthened the bonds of the community. Flowering tree their ethos is not Christian as such, emphasizing instead the preservation of an ancient indigenous culture. But from where I sit and sit or walk the dog is what I do now. The kingdom is happening there. I would encourage you to investigate the flowering tree <coughs> permaculture.org, check them out on Facebook. If I die rather soon, and owners wish to throw money at something, they can do much worse than make a contribution to the Flowering Tree Permaculture Institute. Thanks for the push. Love and wishes, Brian.
have our reading from the gospel, and uh, Brian especially loved John 1, so this is what he chose for, for the funeral. So in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him not anything made that was, anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of man. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Um, I'll admit that I did not know Brian very well. When I walked alongside the Slager family as their mother, Marilyn, was on hospice, and through her passing, I remember appreciating Brian's quiet and thoughtful manner. As Iris has shared more and sent me some of Brian's writings. I have been able to see him from an outsider's perspective, one who is very grateful for those who walked alongside him, especially during his cancer treatment battles, mentioning the many people who had prayed for and cared for him and his family. It was clear that he loved building relationships with those in his life, whether that would be with his wife or his daughter, his neighbors, his family, or his chemo mates, which I love that term. Um, he seemed to recognize, even in the midst of his own struggles and ponderings, the very nuanced realities of those around him. He was intently focused on the world, the environment, and the harm that was being done to it. And he was dedicated to learning and growing and recognizing the roles that humanity played, including himself and the others. And, and others, rallying them to learn and grow in their understanding as well. But as I read through these pages that I was sent, as I looked and learned more about him, the thread that seemed to run through all of this, I realized, is a very clear intentionality in which he lived, his thought processes, his actions, and within his relationships. And I would say this intentionality seemed to really inform his relationship and his thoughts about God as well. To me, that ties in with the beginning of John, which he had chosen for his gospel lesson. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. God created with intentionality, and I think of the wholeness that we find in the parallel passage to John. In the beginning, from Genesis, when we hear the creation of the world, there, it was ordered and well and good. And then in John 1, we come back to Christ coming to be with us, which was in itself a reordering, a recreation, a restoration of wholeness of relationship. Brian wrote about those who had struggled and those who had been prayed for, those who were clearly loved by God, and it reminded me of the incarnation of Christ. Even in the midst of suffering and struggling, we also find a God who calls from the heavens at Jesus' baptism that this son is beloved. Jesus very intimately knew suffering and pain and death. In our church tradition, we speak of that as the theology of the cross, that our God intimately knows everything and every experience that we will go through in the world, even and especially including suffering, pain, and death. Christ was still beloved, even as he suffered on the cross. As we reflect on Ryan's life, I take great comfort in the fact that the God who accompanied him all of his life, through his childhood, through his marriage, through his becoming a father, through his calling to care for the environment, through his diagnosis and treatment and recurrence, was also the one who greeted him on that December day when he took his last breath. That in that moment, he was ushered into the fullness of God's love, experiencing the wholeness of creation and life. In that moment, a new beginning started for him. One full of healing as he reunited with his loved ones who had gone before him, and as he was surrounded by the peace of God. This is what gives us hope as we remember the promises of a God who calls us beloved in our baptism, and uses that to sustain us as we mourn Brian. 
we know that Brian is experiencing the fullness of these baptismal promises, being called beloved in his new home. And I think that hope helps us as we come together in our grief. For community, we are able to more clearly hear God's voice calling us beloved and see his presence with us as we travel this road of loss. Grief is hard. <laughs> You've already gone through a few firsts without Brian here. You've had your first Christmas and New Year's, his first birthday without him present, and soon your own birthdays. There will be times when you can't anticipate the hole that has been left behind, anniversaries, big life events, where you will know those days will hold a mixture of emotions for you. But there are other times where that grief will catch you off guard, surprising you and taking away your breath. On those days, remember that God walks beside you too, holding you, claiming you, wiping away your tears, whispering your belovedness to you, and reminding you that you will see Brian again one day. So today, I know there will be tears because Brian was so loved and so important to us. But we can also laugh and share our favorite memories and stories about him knowing that we have been promised that we will see him again. And for that, we give thanks to God. Amen. Now, our next hymn is hymn number 450, and this is based on St. Patrick's Breastplate, which was a favorite prayer of Brian's. So, uh, it's called, I Bind Unto, uh, unto Myself Today. Please stand as you're able. <laughs>
now we'll have the prayers of intercession, which will be read by um, Ryan's sister. And just so you know, um, when she says, God of mercy, if you'll please respond, hear our prayer.
she had picked out this prayer for uh, the Eucharist. And I think it actually works very well with Brian and his care of the earth. So, holy God, our maker, redeemer, and healer, in the harmonious world of your creation, the plants and animals, the seas and stars, were whole and well in your praise. When sin had scarred the world, you sent your Son to heal our ills and to form us again into one. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord took the bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his acts of healing, his body given up, and his victory over death, we await that day when all the peoples of the earth will come to the river to enjoy the tree of life. Send your spirit upon us and this meal, as grain scattered on the hillside become one bread, so let your church be gathered from the ends of the earth, that all may be fed with the bread of life, your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. And now let us pray the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, um, before we have the Lamb of God, I just want to go over how communion works. We do have gluten-free options and grape juice available. So if you don't want wine or if you have a gluten allergy, just let me know and we will make sure that you get what you need. Um, we usually start with this side. So Karen, who attends here regularly, will lead the, the troops up. Um, so we'll start with that side and then come forward. You can, yep. And then you'll come forward. You can kneel or stand as you're comfortable. There are um, glasses right there that you can grab, and then as you return to the side aisles, there are places to put your cups when you return. So, and now we have, and all are welcome and invited to come forward to celebrate together. Now we'll have uh, our Lamb of God. <laughs>
Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Brian. Acknowledge we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glory, glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. And before our benediction and blessing, just a reminder that you are welcome to join the family downstairs afterwards uh, for some food. So again, you can exit through that door or go out here and go downstairs. We'll be around to help you find your way. Now, Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. And let us go forth in peace in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.